Before we start the video today, I just want to remind everybody, whether you're a supporter of the channel or a viewer of the channel, to zip on over to my Patreon page. You don't have to be a patron to take a look at this, but if you scroll down when you go to the page, there is a video down here called 10,000 Subscribers Patrons Only. That is an awesome video. You need to watch it. I'm doing something really special for all of you that support me and for those of you who could become supporters in the future. So if you get a chance, when you get done watching this video, zip on over there. Like I said, scroll down to where it says 10,000 subscribers, and that's the video you want to watch. And while I have you all, I want to tell you thank you so much for re helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. Never thought I would be here. You guys have done so much for this channel, and I look forward to continually providing content that you like and welcoming new viewers to my channel. Once again, thank you guys so much for helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. You really don't know what it means to me. So now let's get to the video. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the distributions I really enjoy, quite honestly. It's one of the ones that I use quite often. It does state on the website that it's an MX Linux customized, molded, and shaped for content creators. But I use it for so much more. I use it for office work. I use it for business work. I really think it's probably one of the most all-around distributions I've ever used. Yes, it does say on the website that it's specifically for content creators, but this was probably what I would call the most fun and most all-around Linux distro I've ever used. That's what we're going to cover today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is made possible by the eBuzz Central store. If you haven't had a chance to zip over there real quick and take a look, please, I promise you, you will be impressed. We have everything from Linux Mint all the way up to Arch, including these two new additions right here, the Ubuntu and the Storm OS. Not to mention, this one right here is the brand new Zero Linux shirt. So zip on over, take a look around. If you see something you like, go ahead and pick it up. And by the way, if there's something you would like to see on the store, go ahead and drop us a comment and we'll do our best to get it up there for you. Now we're going to go to AV Linux's desktop. Now if you download AV Linux, throw it on a USB, open it up into a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. Right off the bat you get a welcome screen and basically what this is telling you is you're using the version 21.1 Consciousness. This was released on April 15th of 2022 and it kind of gives you a little bit of history that it's a multimedia content creation and has been around since 2008. What I really love about this distribution is it comes with the Liquorix kernel. So if there are specific things you need to do or more power that you're going to need out of the kernel, this kernel will definitely deliver. It comes in the XFCE4 desktop environment. In addition, there are a whole host of useful tools, including MX tools. Now, if you have somebody that has used MX or somebody that has read about MX, you'll understand that MX tools is definitely something you would like to have on a distribution. And a lot of people wish they came on other distributions. And we will cover some of those tools in a moment. And basically they say, take your time, look around, try things out. It is awesome to use. It is easy to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of the welcome screen here. And one of the things I like is you always get beautiful wallpapers. Now, a lot of people will leave comments on my reviews and say, why do you care about wallpapers? Well, I'm the kind of person that when I put an operating system on my machine, I really don't want to chase around and find different wallpapers. I just want them to be there out of the box. So that's one of the things I do like about it. Now, if you right click here, it's definitely going to give you the XFCE menu that you're used to seeing but i love the theming that they use here it's a little bit lighter it's a little bit brighter and with the dark background i just think it comes off real well but it's got favorites right here everything from installer firefox files software mx tools and then down here you've got your accessories and office and settings and stuff like that so you've got XFCE and then you do have open box window manager as well. So it kind of has a the best of both worlds for you, okay? And of course you could come over here and just go to your applications and then you could go to recently used all applications, settings, system and things like that. I do love the beauty of the conky over here. 
it lets you know that it's Tuesday, tells you the time, and then over here it lets you know that it's based on MX-21 Wildflower, which in and of itself is based on Debian 11. Now this version is actually based on Debian 11.3, and the kernel that they're using is 5.16.0-18.1 Licorix. Let you know that it's a genuine Intel Core i7. And then down here it lets you know what RAM's being used at present. In this virtual box, I have issued it two gigabytes of RAM, and at present we're using about 559 megabytes at rest. So even if you're not a content creator and you want to use this as a daily driver, this is definitely something to take a look at. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to come back down here to the dock. You've got Firefox as your web browser. Then right here you got your file manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And this right here is the Thunar file manager. What I like about it is the theming of it. I love the colors that they use. Now this may not be your cup of tea, but they're easy to change. You know you can go into the XFCE settings and change those. You've got your usual suspects over here. And then of course right here, you've got your home folders. It's just a lightweight file manager, but it's still powerful enough to let you get things done. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And then we come back down here. You do have your MX package installer. I'm going to go ahead and open that up so I can show you what we're going to be doing here. And all you have to do right there is type demo. That is the password for it. Once you type that in, it brings you up your MX package installer. Now right here, you can add a bunch of different packages and software to your system. And you can go down through here, like under audio, you can click on that. And if there's anything under audio you would like to add, like let's say you wanted to add a Sunder and PulseFX, or, and you wanted to add Spotify. Let's go ahead and make that smaller. Browser, let's say you want something other than Firefox. You could come over here and pick the browser you wanted. Let's say you wanted Brave. And then you could go down through here and pretty much pick whatever you wanted application-wise and choose it. Let's go ahead and pick Thunderbird. And let's say you wanted to get Lutris. And then you could go down here to icons. Let's go ahead and get some different. Let's go with the obsidians. Now you could go through all of this right here. Select everything that you wanted. Let's say you wanted an office suite. Abbey Word, Calibre, Events, LibreOffice, only Office desktop editors. Let's say you wanted Libre. Go ahead and click on that. But you could pick all these different packages that you wanted. Come down here, click install, and it would install them at one fail swoop as opposed to having to go find them one by one. Now, if you come up here, it says stable repo. It'll download the package information right here and let you know what stable repos you are on. And there's all the packages that you could get from the stable repo. And then the MX test repo. And it gives you a warning. You're about to use MX test repository whose packages are provided for testing purposes only. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And these are your testing repo. Then you got your Debian backports. It'll show you those as well. And then of course your flat packs over here. So you have a lot of different options. Let's go ahead and type demo again. And once you do that, everything from the flat hub will pop up right here. And then you could go choose anything you wanted from the flat hub. So you pretty much got a lot of different things you can do on the MX package installer that makes your life really easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And then we're gonna come back down to the bottom and we're going to open up the terminal and we're going to see if they have HTOP. And they do have HTOP, so I'm going to go ahead and maximize that so you can see everything. And right now, like I stated, we have about two gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine at rest with just the terminal open. We're at about 750 to 800 megabytes being used, which isn't really that bad, quite honestly. It is a little higher than some other XFCE distros, but for what you get, and the beauty of it, I just think you can't go wrong. And on the two CPUs that I'm using right now, we're using anywhere between 5 and 10%. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then you also have sound, your internet, and then of course, your update manager. Let's go ahead and update that. And right here, you've got the MX updater. You can view an upgrade or previewing for full upgrade. You can look over here, nine upgraded packages, zero installed, zero to remove, and zero not upgraded. After this operation, you're going to use 19.5 kilobytes of disk space. I'm not going to do that at present because I am in a virtual machine, so I will go ahead and close out of that. And of course, you've got your power button right here. Now, we're going to go ahead and open up the application menu right now, and you're going to have recently used all applications and then your accessories. Right here, you've got everything from application finder, catfish file search, your conky manager. You can adjust the way this looks over here. 
I don't know why you would. I think it's beautiful, but you might want something different. Uh, screenshot tool, task manager, touchpad, and then of course development graphics. You get GIMP out of the box as well as Inkscape. And then you do have GPIC and Ristretto as well. You've got transmission for your BitTorrent client and then Firefox and FileZilla on multimedia. Now this is where this really comes into place. If you're somebody that's wanting to start working in audio or video, this pretty much gives you everything that you're going to need. You've got everything from Alsa Mixer, Avid Mux, Cinderella, Guitarix, Handbrake, Caden Live, MPV Player, OBS Studio, Pulse Audio Volume Control, Simple Screen Recorder, VLC Media Player. You have so many different applications pre-installed that this really makes it easy for you. Now I'm going to have people in the comments go, this is nothing special. We can go download all these applications and we don't have to worry about it. One thing I love about this distro is it's already there. You don't got to put in the time to go over and download these things one by one. I know that y'all are going to say you can, but this, I think, just makes it easier. Then you've got MX Tools right here. Brightness on your system tray. Disk Manager. iDevice Mounter. If you're using an iPhone or an iPad, you can mount it right here on this Linux distribution. You've got the USB kernel updater. MX Boot Options. MX Cleanup. MX Date and Time. Conky. USB Maker. Menu. Repo Manager. You've got so many different things right here. You can also do what's called an MX snapshot, which is creating a live ISO snapshot of your running system. So let's say when you get done setting it all up the exact way you want it, you can come in here and make a snapshot, make a live ISO and put it on a USB, put it in your bag. If you should ever have any problems and you want to go back to a certain point, you plug that ISO in and it's your distribution exactly the way you had it set up. NVIDIA driver installer. This right here is really handy. It's You click on it and then of course type demo and it's going to bring it up right here and basically ask you there's no NVIDIA card found but when I do install this on this Alienware it will find my NVIDIA card and I've installed this in the past and it makes getting NVIDIA up really simple. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back up to applications. We were at MX Tools. Then you've got Quick System Info, System Keyboard, System Locales. And then, of course, you've got Office, Other. This right here is if you want to set Wine up, and you want to run some Windows programs, and then Settings, Bluetooth, Display, MX Tweak, Synaptic Package Manager. I'm going to go ahead and open this up because I believe this is one of the best ways to get applications installed on your system. Now at the beginning we were looking at the MX tool for installing applications all at once. This is where you come in, you try to hone it down to what you really want to install on a system. So let's say you were wanting to install something like LibreOffice. You could come up here to the search bar, type in LibreOffice, hit enter, and there's your LibreOffice suite. All you'd have to do is mark it, market for installation and what it'll do right here is it'll bring up a window to show you all dependencies and everything that's involved in LibreOffice. So you'll have LibreOffice Base, Calc, Common Core, Draw, Impress, Math, Writer. And once you say okay I want that so we're gonna mark all of those for installation. Now let's say you want to go ahead and get uh, Thunderbird. Go ahead and put Thunderbird in. You can come over here and you can mark Thunderbird as well. Mark it for installation. It'll let you know what dependencies are required. You can go ahead and mark it. So right here, you can pretty much just go search for everything that you want. Go ahead and mark them for installation. And once you have them marked, you can come up here and click on Apply. And it will install them all. You can pretty much have the same control that the MX tool at the beginning has. With the MX tool, you can just go through and click a check mark and hit Install, and it does it. You can come over here and pick them one by one. Go search and filter and find them. Mark them for installation, and then once you have everything pick and selected, hit apply, and it'll install them all at once. And then, of course, down here, you've also got status, origin, custom filters, search results, and architecture. I mean, it's a great way to install software on your operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Quit. And that, my friends, is a quick look at AV Linux. I think a very underrated distribution. 
I think a lot of people look at it and say, hey, it's just for audio and video people, but it's not. It is a beautiful operating system. Yes, it does have the tools for audio and video. It makes it a lot easier to do that kind of work. But if you're somebody new and you're wanting to learn the programs of Linux that deal with audio and video, I think this distribution is definitely the way to go. What do you think? Is this something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, you can become a member right here on YouTube, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon, buy us a coffee, or throw us a donation on PayPal. I would also like to thank today's video sponsors, producer Miss La Cressa, Mitchell Valentino, VIP sponsors Matthew Gower, Antoine Wilk, all excess sponsors are Eugene Lee, Leonard McQueen, Mike DePolis, and sponsors and members Nitrix, Cato Gosted, Chad Jones, and Keith Hefner. If you liked today's video, Here's a couple more for you to take a look at. I generally cover Linux and open source. Sometimes I might do a little Windows bashing. Once again, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.